Hi, my name is Karen, and welcome to our show, Born to Art. As you all know, Montreal is filled with local talented artists of all sorts. In today's episode, we'll be discovering the art of chanting with Lea Longo. Hi, Lea. Thank you so much for being with us today. So I'm discovering uh, talented artists of all sorts. And I know you are a singer, but you're not any type of singer. You're a, you sing mantras. And I know that you were originally a contemporary singer. So tell us a bit about all this. Uh, Thanks, Karen, for having me, first of all. Yes, I, I used to do pop rock singing uh, about a decade ago, actually. And um, I had discovered mantras. and. Uh, it was inevitable that uh, it was going to be on my path. And it, I know you were in Hollywood also for a couple of years. You lived there and you were quite successful. You had songs that appeared in famous uh, movies and TV shows and your dream was to be a f pop singer, right? Yeah, yeah. actually, yeah. <laughs> I was uh, trying to be, a, uh, getting to be a pop, uh, more a pop star and uh, it was a very different uh, vision and, and mission in those days. and. Um, and then I moved back to Montreal. Uh, I settled in Montreal uh, to raise a family. So how did you end up uh, into the whole mantras and chanting and that type of singing, which is completely different from contemporary like pop singing? I know, it was, it was actually by chance, you know. Karen, I, I was doing a couple of uh, different yoga classes at the time, and um, I wanted to discover my yoga. I wanted to find which one resonated with me. And uh, so I, I went online and I, I had Googled uh, yoga classes. And then all of a sudden I saw this yoga retreat in India called Yoga Chanting. And I was very, uh, I was very interested because I, I had never heard this type of yoga, yoga chanting. So I, I uh, basically it's a, a, a trip in India and I had never gone to India as well. So uh, I called up the lady and, it, and it's funny because she, she actually, uh, um, almost didn't want me to go. She's like, no, I told her I was a pop singer. And she said, no, 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 this is no place for the ego. <laughs> this is chanting and mantras. We do, we, we sit on the, the, the floor and we do no physical exercise and it's, it's all with the divine. So I was like, okay, uh, it sounds interesting, uh, I'll come. So uh, basically I, I went to India for a two week retreat, yoga chanting retreat. So that's all you did? That's yeah. all we did and a little bit of yoga, but yoga chanting. Basically we discovered, I just where I discovered mantras in the heart, the mother country, India, in Oroville, in Madras. And um, it was unbelievable because all we did was chant for five hours a day and wake up and, and just be in a beautiful group and use mantras and meditate. And I tell you, Karen, I thought some of these people were on something because they're on, they were so happy and I'm with my pad and my paper and I'm just like, okay, you know, what, I, what am I going to learn things? And oh, you're taking notes? I was really? taking notes and so the, I, I went to the teacher and I said, you know, when are you going to, you know, um, teach? And she said, patience, my dear, you'll, you'll figure it out. And, uh, you know, and, and basically it took me three days to finally let go and just be in the flow, uh, which is the source of, uh, of mantra chanting. And um, that's how I discovered mantras. Uh, it was all uh, through one particular chant is what transformed me uh, called Om Tare Tutare Ture Swaha, which is basically a healing chant. And uh, I, I'll always remember clearly I was chanting the mantra when there was the drums and everybody's voices and uh, there's just tears started uh, coming down and uh, it was something for me to, to, to really look into because I, even writing my own songs, I had never felt such a profound experience and connection with a lyric. And this is not just a lyric, we are tapping into some divine source. And uh, so that's how I discovered and I never let it go since. So a mantra, what is that exactly? It's an ancient text, and if we would take the word mantra, man means mind, 
and Shra means to liberate. So the goal of a mantra is basically to free your mind. It's, a, it's basically a mantra is a vibratory tool to free the mind. So it, you can allow yourself to connect with your divine essence and with the universe and to raise your consciousness through the frequency. The ancient texts are vibrations. And when we chant the holy names of these texts, we are tapping into those frequencies. And so it allows us to purify our, our chakras and to uh, connect with our inner self and it opens our heart. I mean, in our kirtans, in our mantra classes, you leave one way, but you you come one way, sorry, rather, and then you leave another being. So it really transforms you. It's a very healing yoga. It's called nada yoga, nad meaning the sound, the shabad, the sound of music, sound of frequency. And uh, so it really is a yoga, a yoga of sound. And a kirtan, like, what's the difference? Kirtan, mantra? Well, we chant basically mantras in a kirtan. A kirtan basically is a yoga, it's not a yoga, a shabad, where we use the mantras in a meditative fashion. And in a kirtan, basically, there's a gray line between the audience and the leader because when we chant, we chant together. So we're basically raising the frequencies together and we become one voice. So by raising our frequencies, we're tapping into our divine self and opening up our hearts. And it really helps to stop the mental chatter that we have in our minds. So that's the goal of a kirtan is basically to liberate our mind from everything that bothers us and just be in the moment, be flowing in the present moment so you can tap into the, the, the realms of emotions that are always in our heart and let that flow. And a lot of people walk in a certain way, but they'll walk out in a more joyful way. And so you weren't aware about all these things before you went to India? Like, Clueless. Because <laughs> me, before I met you, I had no idea what kirtans were, mantras. I'd never heard of yoga of the sound. Well, you can imagine me too, coming from a pop and jazz background. I had no clue of this, and I, I studied, and I, I also uh, uh, wanted to deepen my practice by becoming a Kundalini yoga instructor, which uses a lot of mantras as well in the yoga class. And uh, by doing that, I, I discovered a lot of mantras as well. And uh, I was so clueless uh, before India, and I, I'm just very grateful that um, this entered my life at that particular time. So to be this type of instructor, is it necessary to go all the way to India? And mm -hmm. to well, well, you could come to my class. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be your instructor. <laughs> so like, if you hadn't done that trip, you would have never, like that changed your life. Yeah, it did actually. I'm not sure if I would have discovered uh, mantras. I probably would have um, later on in time, but I, I'm not sure because I, I, I'll always remember when I came back to Montreal, I was trying to find mantra classes and I couldn't find any. So that is why I, I started Montreal Kirtan Community, where we hold kirtans every first Friday of the month in different yoga studios to expose this sort of, this yoga. It's a tool, a healing tool that everybody can access and use every day. And uh, so I, I probably not, because I, I wasn't exposed to that type of music uh, here and it was very hard to find uh, in Montreal as well. I know it exists now, but it, it was pretty much underground in the 80s, 90s, even in the early 2000s and I'm just starting to see a little bit of a shift now. So how long ago did you start like coming up with these classes? Uh, well, I went to India in, in 2006, uh, 2000. Six, the break January of 2006 and then we started the classes in 2007 and so I've been doing it ever since so it's been seven years yeah and this is one of the things that you do in Montreal to bring awareness to Montrealers who are interested in this type of like kirtans and absolutely. chanting and absolutely my <laughs> mission is to expose kirtan um, as to as many people as possible locally so um, it's really a healing tool. It's, uh, it really helps a lot with a lot of psychosomatic illnesses as well. But if it's uh, a mental issue, uh, healing yoga, a healing chanting, mantras can really help. Uh, in, it's like if you're very helping. stressed. Very and stressed and you have a lot on your mind, the, uh, the kirtan, the nada yoga can really help elevate stress 
And that, I think that's important in today's society where people are always running around. I was one of them. And uh, by just taking a moment um, to, to be in the flow and be in the present moment and chanting, it just allows you to, to be and to meditate. It's an easy way of, to meditate. It's, it's, it's a natural easy way to meditate with the mantra. And you do that like every day, like in your personal life? In the or? morning, yeah, in the morning. I'll always take a, a good 10 minutes in the day, 10, 12 minutes to, uh, to, uh, to chant and to meditate. If not just chant, at least to just sit and see what comes up. Because a lot of times I get a lot of my creative ideas when I'm quiet. And you, those mantras, so you said it's sacred text, but you, I know you have, you recorded like a new album and they're all, it's all mantras and how do you come up with the melodies or what inspires you for all that? Like, I, I was, um, it's funny you ask that because the, I've, I always had uh, more of a difficulty with texts when I was, uh, when I'm, I'm still a songwriter, but I, I, I write uh, less text these days. Um, but when it comes to melodic content, I, I feel that I've been very blessed with uh, with the melodies. Um, it comes to me very naturally. In fact, when I was a, when I was very young, I used to walk on every sidewalk, you know, the squares, and on every sidewalk, at every step, I would just come up with a, a melody. And I would just chant every time I would walk, you know, to the bus stop. Uh, I would just chant these melodies. And I think maybe I was preparing myself for today because. Uh, when we started the, the, the kirtan classes, uh, we had no melody. All I had were the mantras. I knew what I wanted to, to chant and which mantras to do, but the melodies weren't there. So by doing them in a continuous fashion, uh, they became basically the chants on my albums. So I, it comes from the universe. It comes from, I don't know where it comes from. <laughs> it comes from inspired from the guitar, or from the, the drum, and then I just, something comes to me and I just chant. Did you ever sit here by the lake? Yes. It's just so peaceful. <laughs> yes. Just inspiring. <laughs> so I know you have a new album that, uh, could you tell us about it, what it's called and what it's about? It's called Songs of a Siren. Basically, um, I was inspired by the Greek mythology, the sirens, where the mermaid is uh, seducing the sailors to shore. And, um, I, I, re I really loved the, the concept because I wanted to do an album of love chants and just enchanted by her voice it was just that's the, the the word that had captured me so I wanted to do I did an album of love chants and I I put together three elements of my musical background being pop and jazz and of course mantras and so I, I put three standards, three jazz standards, where I included the mantra. And uh, basically, it's a blend of mantra jazz. I, my friend calls it sacred jazz. It's really interesting because I never really heard it before. I'm not sure it exists. But I, I, I wanted to have something that really corresponded with everything musically that I've done in the past, because I've done a pop album, I've done a jazz album, and then I've done two mantra albums. So I said, well, maybe I should integrate all three now. And um, so that's where Songs of a Siren came about. And, uh, uh, it's doing really well. And so would you ever go back to doing complete pop albums or that's finished? It's just no. the mantras now. <laughs> I'm hooked to the mantra. It's, it's, <laughs> you found it's, your passion. It's your, my your, passion. Your... Yeah, I, I, um, it's a lifestyle. The mantra is, is um, it's, an, it's, it's a necessity. It's a tool. It's, uh, it's part of my being. Uh, when, I, when I chant the mantras, I, I still, I always see changes. There's always changes. There's always room for improvement. There's always, we'll always have struggles in every human being between the light and the dark. And so when we chant mantras, we, we push the dark away for the light to emerge and, and to raise our frequency and tap into all, all that's good in the universe. Because there is also a lot of good in the universe. You just need to tap into it. And I know you also initiated a festival, the Om Festival. Yep, two festivals. <laughs> two festivals. <laughs> Could you tell us a bit about all that? <laughs> I think uh, uh, God or un universe uh, chose the right person because uh, when I get passionate about something, I'm pretty gung ho and I do everything. I put not one but two festivals. Um, I visit when I went back to California uh, for a, a festival that is huge in California called Bhakti Fest. I, when I returned, I, I thought, wow, it would be so great to have 
this sort of festival. This, Montreal is the city of festivals, but we don't have a yoga and music festival, chanting festival. So I started the Yoga Chant Festival a couple of years ago. And uh, this year it'll be the, uh, the third festival where we chant all day long, continuous chanting, and there'll be a little bit of yoga as well. And it's just wonderful because it helps expose this sort of yoga in Montreal, the Montreal Chant Fest. And then also I, I also founded another festival called Om Festival, which talks about basically all different healing modalities. And chanting is one modality, meditation. There's also Reiki, massage, and uh, all different types, yoga, uh, medicine, uh, you know, uh, alternative medicine. So it's, it's Om Festival is a global a festival for alternative medicine and then Montreal Chant Fest is a Kirtan niche festival to expose Kirtan in Montreal. And okay, so at the Om Festival you don't actually do Kirtans. It's I, more did. Of a, oh, I did. I did the concert uh, the first year with Patrick Bernard, which is actually a pioneer in mantra music here in Montreal. And uh, it was more underground in the 80s, but now it's starting to, to grow a little bit more. So Patrick Bernard and I uh, basically led the, uh, the chant part, the Kirtan part at this festival. Yeah, because not a lot of people in Montreal, I think, are aware of this type of, uh, like, med. I don't know. Like you're the expert at this. <laughs> well, it's it's a niche. It's a, it's a really niche, but it, it's I think it's going to be growing. The yoga community is really well tapped into it. Uh, but I, I would love to, for uh, everybody else as well to uh, to discover it. Like I said, it, it's uh, because you it's don't a need healing. to be necessarily into yoga. Like no. to, to well, exactly. Mantras and kirtans. Well, the, and exactly. The essence of yoga is basically to to be enlightened, and we do yoga to make our body more flexible in order for us to meditate. So when you do a kirtan, you're basically cutting out yoga and going straight to meditation. So not that there's anything good or bad about that. It's just that it's a different type of yoga, and it's an easy way to meditate. It's it's a natural way uh, to to just allow yourself to connect. Uh, with your divine self and just be happy. So if people are interested in joining your classes or discovering more about like those festivals and your albums, they could just go on your, on your website. On my website, <laughs> lealongo.com, for sure. Or also my, uh, my Kirtan website, montrealkirtan.com as well. And they can find all information. We do uh, Kirtans every first Friday of every month here in Montreal in different yoga studios. So uh, very well... Um, I'm very well uh, exposed this sort of yoga with uh, the, all the different studios and and everybody gets involved. It's really wonderful. We're really, really a really big family, and uh, I think it would be great to have more people uh, join in. Well, thank you so much for being here with us today and making us discover kirtans and mantras and all that. <laughs> thank you, Karen. It's such a pleasure. I, I uh, I'm so honored to be here, and thank you for having me here and to explain. Uh, the Yoga of Sound, and uh, I really hope uh, to see you again soon. <laughs> Thank you. Namaste. <laughs> no complaints, no regrets. I still believe in chasing dreams. Placing bets, but I have learned that all you give is all you get. So give it all you got. I had my share, I drank my fill, and even though I'm satisfied, I'm hungry still. To see what's down another road Beyond a hill And do it all again So here's the life And all the joy it brings here to life to dreamers and their dreams may the Lord bless the whole world with eternal peace 
peace and goodwill. Loka samasta. Suki no bavantu. I hope you all enjoyed discovering the art of chanting with Leah Longo and her musician Rad. I'll see you soon. I'm Karen. See you in another episode of Born to Art.